And today marks a tragic anniversary for the state. It was 49 years ago the Candlestick Park tornado ripped through Mississippi. 16 WAPT meteorologist Adam McWilliams explores how bad it would be if it happened today. On March 3, 1966, an F5 tornado with winds over 200 miles per hour roared across South Jackson with very little warning, striking the Candlestick Park Shopping Center. I remember thinking how black the skies were. Pam Pittman was at the Dog and Suds restaurant at Candlestick Park when the tornado hit. She was only 10, but remembers the day very vividly. I just remember walking in the door. I remember hearing some wind and someone screaming, oh my God, there's a tornado, and they grabbed me and pulled me over the counter. The tornado flattened the restaurant in a matter of seconds. When I finally came to, there was a car on top of me. There was a steel beam on my chest, and there was a car on its side, and I distinctly remember hot oil dripping out of that car onto me. Pam's mother and brother also survived the tornado. 16 WAPT's Bert Case was working at WJTV back then when he received word of the tornado. As soon as I got the call, I went straight to the announce booth, as we had in those days, and I did a bulletin interrupt. Uh, of the regularly scheduled programming and said, we have a weather bulletin from WJTV. If you live to the northeast of Candlestick Park Shopping Center, take cover immediately. The tornado blasted a 200-mile path of death and destruction through Hines, Rankin, Leak, and Neshoba counties, killing 58 people and injuring 500. So what would happen if a tornado that big Hit the Jackson metro area now. A F5 tornado going through a populated metro area is a killer. Stephen Wilkerson with the National Weather Service in Jackson says the result would be catastrophic. Well, with this exact scenario, 4:30 to 5, right. kind of going through the metro at uh, on a on a weekday. Uh, I think it could be very bad with traffic getting very heavy. The landscape of Hines and Rankin County has changed dramatically in the last 50 years. For instance. The stack wasn't here, and much of Western Rankin County was rural farmland. The developments like the Dogwood Festival Market and the Atlas of Mississippi did not exist back in 1966, and four times as many people now live in Rankin County. Another big change, the way we forecast severe weather. Back in 1966, weather technology was primitive at best, but the invention of Doppler radar and satellites have led to better warnings that have saved lives. And they did last year, back on April 28th. That day, an EF3 tornado with winds topping 150 miles per hour ripped across Flowood, Pearl, and Brandon, killing one woman. What we try to do here when we feel these kind of days are coming based on the data is to three, four, five days ahead of time if we can see it coming get that word out. 16 WAPT helps get that word out on the air, on our Facebook and Twitter pages, and with our 16 WAPT weather app, so you can be prepared, not scared. Meanwhile, Pittman has some advice when it comes to tornado warnings. You know, when those tornado warnings come out, take them seriously. You know, listen to what's being told to you. Uh, don't venture out if you don't have to. Stay at home. You know, if you, especially if you have children, you don't want to put your child's life at risk. Mother would have never put my, our, my brother and me at risk like that, had she known. Adam McWilliams, 16, WAPT News. Now, next Wednesday, March 11th at 7 p.m., tune in to 16 WAPT for our severe weather special, Killer Winds. Again, that's next Wednesday at 7.